do a, a video about the um, 300 f4 is um, prime lens that Canon does. Uh, it's quite popular and it's quite useful and uh, I thought I'd give you my uh, my opinion of it really. Um, I've been using it over the past day for the first time and what I can report is is extremely good lens. Um, the focus isn't brilliant but saying that it is a £1,000 lens. Um, basically um, it does hunt a little bit sometimes when you've got like maybe 15 or so twigs around and you're trying to focus on an animal that's in between those twigs you may experience problems uh, focusing so you're probably better off using manual focus in that sort of instance unfortunately I was um, tracking a squirrel that was moving through these uh, branches and the focus uh, just went crazy basically it couldn't figure out what to latch on to and unfortunately it meant I lost the shot um, so keep that in mind but I think that's probably something that's more applicable to autofocus in general rather than this particular lens. Um, what I can tell you about the bokeh is it's absolutely brilliant. Um, when I did go out of focus um, on the background um, and I was using the F, uh, aperture of f4 um, it was pretty good. In fact I was absolutely surprised. Um, I, I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it actually was and um, I thought that the sort of bokeh I was getting was equivalent to what I would expect on a 2.8 zoom lens so the bokeh is fantastic uh, clarity at 300 mm is really good I was disappointed when I was using my Mark 1 teleconverters the 2x um, did seem quite soft so most of the time when I was at our local sculpture park in West Yorkshire um, and I was across a massive um, lake uh, I couldn't really get anything to fill the frame. So I was trying out my teleconverters um, on my Mark 1's that I've got. Um, what I can tell you is the 1.4x is reasonably good. When I zoomed in into the pixels it was a little soft but that you probably only see that if you were cropping a lot um, when I say a lot I mean say if it fills a quarter of the the uh, frame and you zoom in right in if you were to crop that image it would look soft on the screen um, however if uh, you had say a picture that was filling half of the fr your frame up um, and you cropped right in um, I think the image would be pretty usable. So I would say the 1.4x teleconverters are more than good, good enough to be on this lens. Um, I think I, I worked it out at being around 560mm with a crop sensor and the 1.4x. Um, I think it's 480mm um, without the teleconverter on a 1.6 crop on the 7D, um, which is pretty good really because I used to own the Sigma 170-500 on, uh, on on a film camera so it's probably equivalent um, with the crop factor on your, your crop sensors um, what's good about this lens is you can focus down to 1.5 meters and um, what you'll find is if you're at distance there's a little switch on here which you just select 1.5 meter to infinity or 3 meters to infinity so if you're some distance from your subject try and have it on 3 meters to infinity because then it makes you focus a lot quicker um, obviously if it comes a lot closer 1.5 meters um, but I just wanted to say something about um, camo I'm wearing it um, and something happened today which was quite strange I was walking along in the local park trying to get myself a, a picture of a, a squirrel. I didn't expect to get anywhere near a squirrel, to be honest. 
You know what they're like, they'll run away as soon as they see you. Anyway, um, as soon as um, I, I, I approached a, a branch, um, I saw one as plain as day and I thought, whoa, um, it didn't seem to see me and there was, I, I was about two metres away from it, literally, um, with this lens um, in the standard 300mm uh, range without a teleconverter on and took a picture, it is crystal as day, it's filling the frame, um, brilliant picture, um, it's probably the best picture I've ever taken because back in the day I used a mirror lens and I got a brilliant picture, don't get me wrong, but it ain't the best quality. But with this, hopefully, that quality will be ten times better. So, what I'll do is I'll do a follow-up video giving you some examples of the pictures I've taken with this lens at 300mm. I'll also show you some examples with the 2x and the 1.4x in my next video. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but I just wanted to have a quick chat just to say that this lens is great. Um, it's clear. You see my choice was to get this over the 400 56. The reason for that is one simple reason. Um, it has image stabilisation. Okay, it's only two stops of image stabilisation and it does have two modes, mode 1 and mode 2. Um, however, saying that, it is a fantastic lens. Um, when I compared this to examples of the 400 online, um, the quality drop in terms of using a teleconverter was hardly noticeable really. Um, but if you use this at 300mm, the 400 won't compete with this because you've got IS and it's going to be sharp, basically. Um, so it's up to you really. But the problem you got with the 400 is if I was in that scenario where I'd seen that squirrel, number one is I wouldn't have been able to focus on it because I'd be too close. And number two, even if it was in the frame, um, I'd probably be cutting out half of its face or something because I'd be too close. So sometimes having a shorter lens is better because this can focus down to 1.5 meters. So it's a good lens um, and I, I can't really um, argue about its image quality. Um, it's all metal construction, L lens, it's as solid as a brick. Um, the build construction on these L lenses are fantastic. Literally, um, you could drop it and it wouldn't break. Um, the only thing I would recommend, now people are going to say, but it has an inbuilt um, hood on it that can uh, extend, so why would you want to put filters on? Um, it's an old argument. There's a lot of photographers out there will say you don't need them, it also impacts on your image quality. It doesn't really impact on your image quality that much. Um, what I tend to do is, is buy the black and white ones or get the Sigma one, which both of them are high quality. That's the difference. You don't want to go for the higher ones because they're cheap and nasty. But um, if you go for a good quality one, uh, you sh it shouldn't impact on image quality too much. The only argument that supports why you should have one would be to protect your lens. Now this isn't coming from me, I watched a recent YouTube on video um, recently and there was this guy who was holding his 70-400 to new nice Sony lens, right, and he told me about how um, it basically dropped on the floor and the other thermic crack and it was the filter not the lens. The lens costing I don't know nearly two grand or a filter costing you fifteen dollars or fifteen pound um, I think it's a no-brainer. Um, 
think I'd rather keep my lens than than uh, not have one because although these lens hoods are good, they do break, they snap off. This, for example, just goes up like that. So if it did go, bash. So personally, I would always get a UV filter on the end of your lens to protect it. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, but if you're going to get one, get one that's high quality and not one of those cheap higher ones. Because I did buy three of those higher ones. Looked at the coating on, on them and I thought, no, I can see imperfections on the filler. So I went for, uh, on this particular one, uh, a B plus W one, black and white. Um, filter because they're, they're good quality. Also the Sigma ones as well, they're high quality as well. So just remember that guys, if you're going to buy an expensive lens, it's probably a good idea to protect it as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, just keep out for my other video about the examples of this lens. I'll put a new video out probably tomorrow or the day after showing you examples of what it can achieve because at the moment I'm in the process of updating my portfolio and uh, I will be uh, getting some more pictures for you but I just wanted to tell you guys about the importance of uh, camouflage it's unbelievable how closer you can get to your subject wearing it where the animals can't really see you it's um, quite strange how they can't see you but it works, truly works. So, you know, buy yourself a t-shirt, even if it's just a t-shirt, you know. You're only going to spend, what, 10, 15 pound on a, on a camouflage t-shirt. Um, I'd probably recommend getting some sort of coat for winter, but um, that's my advice. Anyway, watch out for my other video, and hopefully uh, that new video will be helpful. But like I said... The Canon 300L um, F4 lens is fantastic um, and you couldn't really get at or a better lens than this. Um, the only choice really you have is the 300 F4, the 400 5.6 or do you go for the 1 to 400 zooms or even the Sigma and Tamron's 150 to 600. The choice is yours. Um, but I would definitely recommend this lens it's one of the best for image quality and that's what I look for so if I'm telling you about a lens that gives you good image quality I'm, it is actually what I say it is image quality is brilliant um, because I'm always researching lenses and, and looking into what people have said having a look at their examples comparing them to my lens examples and that's how I evaluate my lenses in the real world, uh, not by charts. But um, my advice is um, probably a good idea to go to a local camera shop um, and rent it for a, a day. See if you like it. Um, might only cost you, I don't know, £20, £30. Um, and then find out for yourself if you like it. It might be a good idea to buy all the lenses that you would like to see how good they are and then pick the best one for you that might be the best way to go anyway this is my little review of the 300 f4 l lens um prime and i hope this video has been helpful um by all means it's a fantastic lens we'll just wait for my part two um video that i'll produce about this lens um in the next day or two with some examples and uh, you'll be able to watch that. Thank you. Bye-bye.